Within the following introduction, anyone, alive or dead, that has a similar name is purely coincidental. A new series of the appendage starts soon on mainstream television. See the most obnoxious bunch of egotistical, narcissistic cretins you could ever have the misfortune of meeting, worshipping Lord Saccharin. Self-made billionaire, narcissist extraordinaire, and one of the most miserable, ruthless, and obnoxious scumbags you could ever wish to meet. This week, on the appendage, Lord Saccharin is at a sewage farm with the two competing teams. Right, this is raw sewage. Oh, all Most billionaires have made their money selling crap to the public. Your task this week is to find creative ways of selling this sewage. Team 1 sets about the task of moulding the sewage into a life-size statue of Lord Saccharin, bent over to allow cowing members of the public to kiss his backside for luck. Meanwhile, Team 2 set about approaching supermarkets, hopeful they can add the sewage to their ready meals, and with flavourings, the public won't notice any difference. Yes, tune in to the appendage to find out how the teams get on and who gets through to the final round. Remember, the winner gets the honour of kissing Lord Saccharin's shoes and becoming one of Lord Saccharin's slaves. Sorry, I mean employees. Hello, I'm Chris and welcome to another broadcast. First, please accept my apology for the amount of bad edits in the introduction. It was rude, so I had to tone it down a bit. Now, where I live, around 2013, a developer submitted plans to the council's planning department proposing to build 63 houses on the Great Belt. There was major uproar amongst the local residents who protested outside the local council offices. Even though it was peaceful, the police were there and it even got into the local newspaper. Around 50 householders protested. The proposal was eventually rejected as the local council were also against it. In 2017, a developer submitted plans to the local planning office for over 300 houses to be built, not only on the same plot as before, but also spilling out over many more acres of green belt countryside. Now remember, in 2013, around 50 households objected to 63 houses. Do you know how many households, and this is in sort of my local area, I'm not talking about this, uh, further afield, but do you know how many households objected this time? Four. Yes, you heard correctly. Four. The apathy is now mind-numbing. So what has changed in the four years between 2013 and 2017. The housing proposal is far worse than the, the proposal in 2013, but the silence from the residents is deafening. Now 2013 wasn't that long ago, only a few years. Now, since then, Borough of Broxburn has started a company called Badger Investments Limited. I mentioned them in a previous video. Badger Investments' role is to acquire properties for rental. A councillor, I believe, is one of the directors. Broxburn Council were opposed to building 63 houses on the Green Belt in 2013. But surprise, surprise! They are now 100% for building over 300 houses on the Greek Belt and subsequently approved the proposal on the 22nd of May this year 2018. 
Well, well, what a surprise, eh? Isn't it amazing how increasing the council's finances has changed their minds, eh? Even though Boroxburn approved it, the land is Metropolitan Greenbelt, so the final decision is not up to them. I believe it's the Secretary of State. Therefore, as I say this today, August the 15th, 2018, there's still time to object. As far as I know, a final decision is yet to be made. The second difference between 2013 and now is the building developer allegedly employed the services of a PR agency. In my view, public relations is the art of conning people. It's rather like a suspicious stranger in the pub who, who offers you a real Rolex watch for five pounds. Only the most gullible would believe it, and that is how PR works. Briefly, what is now known as PR was originally known as propaganda, of which the originator was Edward Bernays. He was the American government's propaganda writer during the First World War. Afterwards, he used his skills to get women to smoke, thus making the tobacco industry an even bigger fortune. Come the Second World War, the word propaganda had fallen out of favour, so it was replaced with the words public relations. It is now known as public liaison. In my view, whatever fancy words you want to call it, it all adds up to a con. Nowadays, conning people has become a major industry, and it has become so technical they can manipulate public opinion with relative ease. It's terrifying. Now back to what I was originally talking about. Some time ago, I worked on a large industrial project. I hasten to add it was nowhere near Broxburn. There was major public opposition to the project, ranging from environmental groups through to the ordinary householder. People were horrified that an ugly blot on the landscape would not only destroy the environment, but ruin their rural lifestyle. It looked as if the client was going to have a hard time getting it built. That was until the client employed the services of a PR agency. In a short time, the client gave the major environmental groups a sizable financial contribution. This is all perfectly legal. Whether the client was advised by the PR agency or not, I don't know for sure, but it certainly looks as if they were. Then the client started to help other groups, and sizable contributions were made to them. The PR agency used their skills on the public, and in a short time, major opposition to the industrial project simply melted away. As far as I know, everything they did was perfectly legal and above board. The most amazing turnaround was leaders of residents' opposition groups suddenly fell silent and turned towel and many of them marginalised what remained of those objecting to the project. I know this as one of the chaps I worked with, he lived locally and knew what was going on. Now I've seen similar happen on other projects. I personally can see a similarity to what has happened around where I live. Why around 50 households objected to a relatively small housing proposal in 2013 and now only four, yes four, households have objected to a huge housing proposal to build over 300 houses. Food for thought, eh? Thanks for listening and please subscribe to receive regular updates and remember to tell others.